Dr. Gold with Dr. Gold's Optimal Living Institute. A headline read, fish oil supplements might come with serious health risks. <laughs> One of my patients sent me this article, asked me, should I be concerned? So I, you know, looked at the article. It has a lot of research methodology. It's a longevity or longitudinal study. Longitudinal study, you got yeah, it right? Yeah, got it right. Okay, so he's going to take it away. He's actually an expert in statistics and research methodology. My better half and Aww, my king. You're so sweet. <laughs> Dr. Gold. So first off, let's talk about the study. 415, over 415,000 people in the UK, a little bit more heavily weighted to women. They gathered tons of information. They tried to rule out any other potential differences in between these groups. So they're comparing a group of fish oil supplement takers to a, fish of non, to a group of non-fish oil supplement takers or people that don't take fish oil mm -hmm. supplements yeah. with regular users. And they're comparing to see if there's a difference in the outcome. And the outcome was gathered 16 years after the study started. And they're looking at different types of cardiovascular events and death. So, And they were in white males. Well, no. Wait. It was a largely Caucasian, a lot Caucasian and a little bit women. heavy skewed towards females. Yeah. But they can control for all that. 40 to 69. 40 to 69. There were smokers included in the study. There were people with hypertension, high cholesterol. Binge drinkers. Binge drinkers, things like that. People that didn't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, people that did. So there's a wide gamut of people in the study. But... They gathered it on a self-reported basis. In other words, they said, are you a regular fish oil supplement user? Mm -hmm. So a lot of this was self-reported. The interesting outcome of the study, the, the article that Tanya's patient sent or that referred to was basically talking about negative outcomes. Yes, there were two negative findings. Number one was that there was a slight increased risk of atrial fibrillation and of stroke if you took fish oils versus the people that didn't take fish oils. So there's a little bit of a risk elevation there. But the study also showed there was a big decrease in risk once you had cardiovascular disease for that progressing to getting worse or from you dying from that disease. Mm -hmm. So there was a trade-off. There were some benefits and there were a couple of small adverse effects from the study. Again, very long term, lots of people. And they tried to control for all the other influences on what might have caused those adverse cardio effects. Yeah, and the thing that they didn't mention is what type of fish oil people were taking, like the dosing, frequency, and brand. And we They're know that can things, matter. Yeah. yeah, those are big things. It can matter. We know quality of fish oil, where it's sourced, whether it is third-party tested, does it actually have what it says it has, but also is, there heavy, is it contaminated with heavy metals? That could be concerning as well. Is it coming from tuna, which are large predators that can, again, because they eat so many of the other fishes, can be more contaminated with those heavy metals, too. Yeah, they tend to have, we, it's known fact that yeah, tunas no, have no. higher levels of mercury in it. Mm -hmm. um, they've been tested and it's been shown over time. So there's a lot of questions here. For me, it's why are these results contradicting themselves? Some benefit, some not. So why is that? And for me, it's simply, we just simply don't know enough. They didn't get enough precision at the very beginning of the study in terms of what they were taking, how frequently. Yeah. We don't know if they took it for the entire 16 years or not, and so forth. Yeah, so just don't look at a headline for face value, what we're trying to say. Make sure you actually read the study or get a healthcare professional to look at it or you know talk to us. We're happy yeah. to explain it. But go into a little more depth. Get the study if possible and actually read it for yourself to understand or get some help to to make sure it makes sense yeah. for you. Use Remember, common sense approach. the media <laughs> creates sensationalism. <laughs> That's how they sell. That's how they get people to read. They put articles and they put headlines out there that create a, a frenzy and they want people to read them or people will want to read them. So here it's just look at it from a balanced approach. It is a balanced study. It is a very well-designed study over time. It's just there's a lot of questions that we simply don't know the answer to. Yeah, and the question should... For my patient, she was asking, should she stop her fish oil supplements? For her, it's doing so much benefit. And I would actually, you know, wait for further studies. For my own patients, of course, it'll be a case-by-case -case basis. If they mm. have other risk factors for those diseases, of course, we'll, we'll make sure we uh, treat that. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to personally continue yeah. fish oil and make sure it's coming from a high-quality source and then also talk to my patients on an individual basis. And, and we're very evidence-based. So we're not just gonna look at this study and say stop if you have a high risk of stroke or if you're concerned about a stroke 
or if you're concerned mm-hmm. about myocardial infarction. We're, I'm sorry, atrial fibrillation. Well, you I keep confusing that. You need to talk to your healthcare professional, yeah. number one. But we also got to look at the overall research body. And overall, the body of research indicates overwhelmingly that there are benefits. So you always see contradictory studies that say, yeah, okay, there's an adverse effect here. Then we have to start questioning why. And that's where the future research comes in. So it's something to monitor going forward. It's something to keep an eye on if other research studies come out and continually indicate there might be an elevated risk here. But we've also got to keep in mind that overwhelmingly the studies show that there's a tremendous benefit for taking fish oils. And there is reduced it trial, which actually showed a 20% or 25% reduction in stroke and 20% reduction in cardiovascular outcome with the use of the CEPA is the trade name, but yeah. it's icosapent e- ethyl. Basically, Say that three times fast. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's EPA, basically part of the uh, fish oil component, and it really has shown reduction for cardiovascular disease, as uh, many studies have shown. So yeah. again, let's weigh all the evidence and go from there. Yeah. I mean, and this is a great example. That study showed a 25% benefit. Yeah. This one showed a negative 5% increased risk. Yeah. So, you know, it which one's right? On. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. So, and there is the omega-3 index where they can actually objectively determine what your omega-3 levels are. And I would love to see a follow-up study of identifying people with the high omega threes and see their risk for atrial fibrillation, for a stroke, and then obviously look at the blood work to see if they've actually yeah. absorbed the omega threes, yeah. things like that. Yeah, and then also just their other risk factors because obviously yeah. we know as you get older you are at risk for different comorbidities. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah, of course, thank my you pleasure. For information, Doctor Gold and Doctor Gold. Remember, your health matters, and thank you so much for joining. Take care, and we would love your comments. And if you can ring the bell for notifications, and just let us know. Subscribe. We appreciate that. Toodles. Toodles. Mwah.